Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome, amazing episode of Push the Point, where I have got with me the Greek god, the guardian man of Greece himself, your god, Samaras. We've been here before. If, if, you, if, you, if, you, if it's your first time, this guy's been on with me for probably every set there's a hero, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and this time, <laughs> and this time around, we've got Guardian and no one else in my brain that I'd want to bring on more than Yorgos for a Guardian hero. We've got we there is Betsy, but you're going to show us the new hero, Victor Goldman. You were hyped when this came out, dude. Well, first off, how are you? I'm pretty great. I'm super excited to finally start the new season of Constructed and when we finally start playing with the new cards, I just can't wait for yeah. this to start. Oh, I, I'm I'm really, really hyped for uh calling Liverpool as well. This this set seems like nothing but so much praise for this overall. So if you're not coming if you're from the UK or EU, head over you gotta come over to Liverpool, man. This set is gas for limited but this is a cc deck tech for the high and mighty himself your goss break this down i've got the victor's gold main hero up the first time each of your turn you create a gold token from an effect you control draw a card so the first time you get a gold on your turn draw a card right how good is this part of his ability it's not on you it's on every hero's turn is it I, each time the first time each turn Right. Okay. Even better. Uh, that's probably because it works better with the Clash. I've read that. Yeah, so on each turn, if you gain a gold, draw a card. How good is this ability? I mean, when uh, there are some cards that uh, do create gold in the offense while you have some hit effects that create gold and stuff, mm. but they are not the highlight of this hero. I mean, specifically on this deck, we use none of that stuff. And the main reason we use you used to create gold is with classing and on the blocking. And let me just tell you, the effect is amazing. <laughs> I mean, it pushes, it's literally like using Codex of Frailty in block. That's my Aww. feelings when you generate a gold. I mean, it's, it feels like you play the Codex while blocking. You play the Codex defense reaction or something. I mean, the, the value is just off the charts when you actually manage to generate a gold in your opponent's turn and draw an extra card to have to either block more or, you know, swing back while you have already blocked a bunch. That's... So if you don't know Codex of Frailty, which I'm sure the majority of you watching this video does know, I mean, Codex of Frailty is considered a really, really broken card. So having that sort of feeling when that happens, man, that's, uh, that's I consider a pretty strong ability. And the second line of text saying the first time each turn you would fail to win a clash. So a clash is um, there's only one card that offensively crashes, which is his weapon, which we'll get into. But most of the time a clash is a defensive thing that you're doing. So when you defend with a card, it will say that has clash written on it. You Both you and the opponent reveal the top card of your deck. And whoever has the highest strength card wins the clash so the first time each turn you would fail to win a clash so you didn't 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 work out for you instead you may destroy a gold you control if you do put one of the reveal cards to the bottom of the owner's deck then clash again giving you better odds to actually win your clash so his second line of text your goss what's your feelings on this strong situational i mean the guardian in general does not use the passive effect of gold great i mean paying two to draw a random card of the top most of the time is not that great into guardian because your decks are most of the time either reds or blues so mm -hmm. it doesn't really fit the curve of getting a random card because you might want to draw a card for arsenal and you get another blue so i mean there are a lot of misses so having another way to use gold to ensure sometimes that you can win these classes is actually really important and i think that's the biggest strength of this ability that you a lot uh, you will see this down the line that uh, there are some pretty powerful classes class cards that uh, do not have an attack value that mm -hmm. means you and you need to run these cards because the effect is just so amazing so having the insurance that 
even if you lose a class because you reveal the card that does not have a high attack value, and you can do that again because you're a guardian and most of your attacks have a huge attack number, makes the math pretty great, wanting you to be the hero that focuses into classing all of the time and it really smooths out how you play out a game with victor yeah no that's 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 really cool to hear and um if you haven't checked it out which we will put it down below yoga streams a lot right so i'll put the link down below and you get to see him just slamming um lots of people in the face with victor goldman down there but let's crack on let's crack on so uh let's Cool. So let's move over to the uh, equipment. We have, uh, I don't know, where do we start from here? Seems like a lot of heavy block value stuff. I think we'll just go for his really cool looking shield. Mm. At the Aurum of Aegis, I hope I pronounced this right. It's a Vicious Specialization card, so only he can use this as the Guardian player. Uh, it's got temper two, so that means you block and block again and it's dead. And it just says this counts as a gold. So thoughts on the shield i mean it's a pretty important piece of victor's puzzle this shield because sometimes that was always the problem how do you generate the first gold because what happens if you miss the first time you were about to generate a gold with classing what happens then do you get you get a full stop in your engine and in your value and the shield sometimes is there to save the day i mean the best use i have use the shield for is that you block early sometimes with that to mm -hmm. get the two points of value with temper and then even if you have generated zero gold yet you have insurance that when you're going to block with a class card in order to generate another gold you have the insurance that you will win that class in order to get the first gold and start you know start the engine and if you end up not needing the, uh, to sacrifice the shield for Victor's ability, you then get the one point of value extra, which is still pretty fair. I mean, three points of armor from your shield is exactly what you're expecting. Yeah, no, that's fair. It's pretty simple, pretty simple stuff. But I like the fact that you, this is one of those pieces of equipment that you would go, which one do you want to block up, like use its two block value at first? And this one is tends to be that one that you want to use. Yeah. Um, all right, we've got Civic Steps, a, a card that you will see in the, um, it's, I think it's the starter set, which I can't remember the name of that starter set. It's the Professor. Yeah, the Professor starter set where it's um, you've got, it's the UPF set. But mm -hmm. there's a Guardian there and uh, he's, got a, he's got these uh, boots in there, which is basically uh, temper two. So it's just the block value, right? But when you defend with this, you create a quicken token. The, the opponent gets a quicken token. So, I mean, that's a, that's a negative for blocking. So why did you pick this? I mean, it's it's a bit of an auto-include in the Guardian, you know, Freed's archetype that you have a lot of equipment. But I'm really starting to having second th thoughts about this card because, right. I mean... We will come into a bit about the matchups of Victor, and one of the hardest matchups for Victor is Kayo, because you it's really hard to win classes into Kayo. Mm -hmm. And Kayo can really make great use of the civic steps, yeah. can really make insane uses of uh, the weekend token. tokens. So I'm actually thinking to cut this card if Kayo becomes starts becoming you know a bigger part of the meta game. If Kayo is not a big part of the meta game and you use Civic Steps correctly, you get a two value, two block for essentially free, which is insane. Yeah. To have to face off, you know, versus Azalea, versus, you know, other Guardians. The fact that you have another two block equipment in your boots is really great. Yeah. And it's time, it, it, you get to choose when they get that Quicken token. So most of the time you can sort of just foresee, I know that your next attack is just going to get a go again anyway. So having, you having that quick that Quicken token is just largely not that valuable. In, in, in a sense, but yeah, when it comes to set, like you said, certain matchups like Brute that are chasing for that um, go again, you know, because they just don't have it inbuilt with them. It's got really high value to that. But then at the same time, you know, there are times where 
if they're coming in with I don't know, they come in with an attack that had a go again and then there's a claw that you know it's got to go again and then their last attack, they're just throwing away the Quicken Token if they use that attack? You know, um, has there been times where that's just been handy? That's, that's. I mean, Kajio and a lot of class, you know, Brute will generate some agility tokens and if you give them a Quicken token when they already have an agility token, it essentially is exactly what you're saying. It is nothing but... There are also a lot of cards that they could still make use of the mm. weekend token sometimes. And it's really hard. It, it makes it way harder to play. It's not that auto. I need to block and I'm just using the equipment. And in bigger tournaments or in big events, you might want something, you know, a bit more relaxed to play. You know, not to think so much about every single time you're about to use civic steps. Yeah. I mean, fatigue, mental fatigue is a real thing when you're playing Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. So what, what would be your alternative pick if you didn't have this? Probably just Iron Rot. Probably just Iron Rod uh, boots. It's it's good enough. One armor value is still good enough to prevent some on hit effects and still have the one point of value. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Right, uh, we'll move over to the uh, Crown of Providence. Pretty much, uh, you know, a solid staple card for most decks. So uh, when this defends, you may put a card from your hand or arsenal to the bottom of your deck if you do draw a card. I mean, we've seen this a hundred times. There's quite a lot. I think every deck would run this. Um, yeah, it's just solid, right? Yeah, I mean, there is a minor note here that uh, there has been, in Heavy Hitters, there has been a new headpiece uh, revealed mm -hmm. that's uh, also pretty great, and that, that was a huge contender for this spot as well. The thing with Victor is that because you draw a lot of random cards, either because you use gold or because you generate gold and you have extra cards in your hand, a lot of times you put random cards in Arsenal. So, and because you don't want to miss that value sometimes, you want to be able to do that, to put a random card in Arsenal, because you know at some point you're just going to use Crown of Providence to kick that away and get a brand new card that you can actually make use of. Mm. So that's why we... Pro Crown of Providence is slightly more important to Victor than it has been to other Guardians. For instance, for Bravo. I mean, yeah. Providence is way more important to to Victor than it has been to Bravo. Fair. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. We've got the new Gauntlets of Iron Will. So when this defends, the next time an attack would gain power. This chain link. So it's specifically this attack that this card is blocking. Instead it gains that much minus one. So really, in other words, it's an attack reaction that gets a minus one. Yeah. So why have you put this in? I mean, a Crater Fist is always a good, you know, equipment to have access to. But if you see the rest of the list, we do not really have a lot of cross cards. No. So there was not a huge reason to want to include Crater Fist. And Ninja is, you know is a matchup that's a bit rough in Guardian in general. So Gauntlets of Iron Will helping prevent that sneaky plus one sometimes is super important. I think yeah. I think Gauntlets of Iron Will, as far as Ninja is, you know, exists in a meta game, will be probably the pick over Crater Fist yeah. for, for the Guardian kit. But if for whatever reason that you couldn't pick up this legendary piece of equipment and Crater Fist's value goes down, would you say just Crater Fist is fine? I mean, 95% of the time, because the opponent will see the gauntlets, they are not even going to use the attack reaction. So most of the time you are generating zero extra value. I haven't, I have almost never used this card to, to get the effect on. I mean, it's really hard to get it on. So it's... A really a minor upside crater feast is just as good yeah fair enough fair enough um and then we've got the tectonic plane uh good old classic uh guardian card it's really cool to see this sort of arrive back again and not seeing the tunic this time so uh once per turn spend a resource great a seismic surge token go again and the seismic surge token is at the start of your turn when it pops you get a resource so you're banking a resource for next turn has battle worn so really big block of armor and a resource for next turn why did you pick this uh, uh, the only alternative card that you normally see over this is a tunic so what made you go tectonic plating over tunic so 
pretty much now that's one of the big decisions you need to make when you're building a Guardian deck in general. And the biggest reason for that, even though it sounds silly, is Dromai. Mm. The fact that uh, you need to run Anethos into Dromai for, in the sideboard in order to have a chance into fight off her, you know, super defensive playstyle. And you are not bravo. You cannot easily pitch two cards for Anethos. No. So you need a way to pitch a second card. That, that's not a problem with uh, bravo because he can just activate his uh, ability if he has a second blue or he can pitch a red. You can yeah. pitch a red, but with Victor, you don't have any ability to activate in order to pitch a second card for Anethos. So you need the Crater Fist. Yeah, okay. Well, if you do not respect Dromai, or if Dromai was not such a big part of the meta game, I think actually Victor would work way better without Anathos and with Tunic, to be completely honest. Okay, okay. But the reason, but you know, simply because Dromai exists and you need to have a way to fight that type of defensive slow deck, you need to have access to Anathos, and that means you need to have access to tectonic plating. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's a, it's a, but it's really, it's still awesome to see that the Guardian chess play is back. I'm sure it's just, mm. it, it feels good to actually using the class equipment appropriately. Right. Well, that's your main board equipment. Let's get stuck in to the deck. So I can see here. I'm trying to think where do we want to start. Um, I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with basically your gold generation, the little flavor. Mm -hmm bit that makes um victor who he is and then we'll go down to the actual attacking cards which you've got quite a lot of so let's start with test of strength automatically this card was just like well if you had to pick one that was just quite simple this is it when this defends you clash and if you win the clash you get a gold so you draw that card that you just clashed with well, there you go i mean it's not that hard is it block it's a sink below sometimes that draws you a card yeah it's i mean it's insane when when the value goes off with this card it's great i mean in general with victor whenever test of strength and the other gold generation card we have draws is activated you feel like you're literally cheating the game <laughs> i mean you get an extra card in hand to in order to attack in order to block their next Attack, the, the value you get of Test of Strength is insane. And the moment you have the first gold, you know they have the insurance that you're not, you're never going to lose a class again now. Yeah. You're, you will not lose a class now that you have the gold to spend for Victor to maybe, you know, class again. Yeah, no, I mean, pretty simple. And then we'll go with Trounce. So when this defends, clash with the attacking hero and then put the reveal card on the bottom of the deck. So you do a clash and then... You've got to do another clash. And if you win both, you get a gold, a might, and a vigor token. A might is plus one at the start of the next turn. You get plus one to your next attack. And vigor is at the start of your next turn. You get a resource. So, Trounce. Is this... Explain. It, it, it just this seems crazy. Probably, this is probably the reason why you want to play Victor. Yeah. This is literally the card why you want to play Victor is this card. This card is insane. I mean, you class twice. You have a lot of cards also that generate stuff, generate value when you reveal them for class, like your specialization and like some blues we have. So digging your deck twice to look for such a card and getting a bunch of my to a bunch of tokens and drawing a card for gold and blocking it's it's <laughs> enormous it's there will be so many stories about like you blocked with four cards you played the trounce you revealed twice the card that generated vigor token and you slumped back with a spinal crash while have blocked with five cards already or something yeah. i mean the yeah. the, the Things you do with this card is just way off the charts. Yes, yeah. I mean, the ceiling is high, and but there are, I imagine as well. There's this certain heroes like maybe a Guardian Mirror and Brute that just goes. Is this the? Is this gonna work? But then you got Victor, right? But then at the same time, it's that variance, isn't it? It's that you don't really know what's gonna come, but. 
Yeah, I imagine. But everyone else, this card's just like, okay. <laughs> I mean, if I had to explain Victor, you know, in a single line, why to play Victor, if your meta game has a bunch of heroes that you can win classes, Victor is going to decimate them. This is going to, you know, run them over. If you can, if you win every single class you do with Victor, you're. It's like you play five intellect all of the game. I mean, it's like oh. playing with five cards every single turn. It's just plain silly. If not, that's where things are starting to get a bit more rougher. If you cannot easily, you know, win a yeah. lot of these classes, it becomes. Well, it's slightly it, worse. It makes his hero text a little... Well, it's blank, isn't it? It's just a blank hero mm. text that if you don't generate that gold and if you're not that hero that's winning clashes, then that goal... It's just... Yeah. It, it just then becomes a, a blank hero text that makes you then sort of ask that question. But like you said, if not, man, these cards pop off like mad and I have seen them and they are disgusting when it works. So they are two gold generating clash effect cards that are just really pushing victor's hero ability to the top now let's go through some of your dare i say it heavy hitters yeah yes <laughs> uh let's start off with uh, uh let's start off with a classic spinal crush is a classic if you the do best guardian the best guardian card ever printed whenever you play guardian just slam this card x3 nothing can ever go wrong with playing spinal cross in no. your turn so. no yeah it's pretty straightforward if you deal four more damage uh they basically lose all means of go again on everything right you just you have one turn it's the uh red in the ledger of 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 it of um of guardian yeah uh that's it pretty straightforward Good, good cost value comes in for nine. Yeah, solid, solid as anything. Simple as that. We'll go through a, a new one, primed to fight. Cost five comes in for nine, just like Spinal Crush. But if you've control of Vigor tokens, cost one less to play, which is really good. And if you control a Might token, this gets plus one, really good. So I can see why because. You're going to put this in. You can sort of see that you're making mites and vigor tokens. Is there any more to explain to it than that? I mean, the turn cycle where you block with trounce, you made the might and vigor and drew a card and used a single blue to play prime to fight because it gets minus one from the vigor token and you get an extra resource from the vigor token to play this card of a single blue. That it's a, a, how you win games. I mean, three for eleven. Like, <laughs> three for eleven, while you have already blocked nine or something. I mean, it's it's plain silly how much you know you generate by doing this card. There is also another side note in Victor that you will see a pattern in this deck that we do enjoy having these big number attacks that have no hit effects because we somewhat just want to overpower the opponent because we. So we have these turns where we play with extra cards and we want to translate these extra cards into as much value as possible. So blocking with two cards, classing, drawing a card, and then playing a prime to fight is one of the, even without any of the effects active, just five for nine, playing damage, okay? Yeah. It's still a great way to translate the extra card we drew with gold into instant damage, into instant numbers. Yeah. The biggest number wins. And also, the big number attacks help us with to win classes because that's the reason we run cards like Pulverize. That's why we want the biggest numbers available in our deck in order to... When it pops off the top, you know you cannot lose the class yeah. this, this turn. Um, well, since uh, since we're talking about big numbers, the biggest number, Pulverize. Pulverize. What a card. So, cost 10. Well, that's a lot. It costs a lot, but it comes in for 14. Even bigger, right? He free, so for whatever reason, you happen to keep this card at the end of your turn and you have a blue in your hand, you can pitch a blue and then you can put this into Arsenal and it will cost you'll make three seismic surge tokens, so cost three less. But if this even touches you, when this hits, the first attack during their next turn is minus four. Right. Break this card down. Why is I mean you you said you want to get some big hits in. 
I mean, this is the big hit. So, in general, running 36 blues and pulverize is not so efficient. I mean, it's not if you will not have the... You wanted more blues. If you want to run three pulverize in your deck, you need more than 36 blues to efficiently, you know, be able to play pulverize mm. in, in general, mm -hmm. in Garden. But... In Victor, first of all, it's the thing that you draw a card, and it was the same reasons we said before. I mean, if you only block with a class card that draws a card and you get a new card, you might still have, you know, the resource to play Pulverize because you just drew an extra blue off the top of your deck, and now suddenly you do have the resources to play the Pulverize. It's the biggest number available in the game, which is also pretty relevant. And sometimes, again, because Victor... The biggest weakness of Victor is when the opponent is not attacking you at all. Yeah. That, that's probably the biggest weakness of Victor because you cannot trigger all these spicy class effects. So having a single copy of this card in your hand means that you can still use your four-card hand to just swing with hammer, make a seismic surge, and heave the pulverize for next turn. So you manage to use a four-card hand with a deck like Victor, which has a weakness in that aspect, in order to actually generate some value and threaten a huge attack yeah. for the turn afterwards. And it basically just asks for everything, doesn't it? You can't take this to the face. It's, yeah. You'll get pulverized. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, yeah. So, and the, and the last note about the big attacks is that uh, Victor has no evasion in general. Does not have dominate, does not have overpower like Betsy or something. And you, you need a way sometimes to actually close a game. So the fact that you have all these cards that trade so up in fatigue wise that, you know, Thunderquakes and Pulverize and Spinal Crashes and Prime the Fights, every single card of them needs, is a single card that needs three or four cards, you get fully blocked. Mm. So you will never lose a fatigue game if you actually manage to play your cards. And that's the type of evasion that maybe you're looking for at Victor. Yeah, no, and I think that just follows on with uh, just quite simple, the Thunderquake Red is just that, right? You know, a big number, just as you're explaining, that that fits into that curve really well. You know, it's got a heave, sure, but six for 10, pretty simple. Here's, here's a lot of damage. Um, another one that comes in for Tim, a card that I'm really happy to see come into play, Righteous Cleansing. So the on-hit effect is if this hits, reveal, well, if it's not within this hits, when this deals four or more damage from the crush effect, look at the top five cards of their deck and then banish one or more cards with the same name among them, and then put the rest on the top of the deck in any order. So the crush effect is fine it's crippling if it works but explain you know is it just is this just one of those things again the the, the number is big it's it's a big number attack that's a yellow blocks for three and has a type of hit effect in you know the long run yeah it has a type of hit effect so it's beatier in everything but it literally does everything it's a big attack blocks for three is a yellow you know mm. it's you couldn't ask her for anything more in such a deck. Yeah, seems pretty seems pretty clear cut. I love it. I love seeing this card come back in. And then the final of the uh, big Wambo big hit turns, the Golden Sun. Golden Sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's Victor's specialization, so only he can run it. As an additional cost to play this, you may destroy a gold. If you do, this gets plus three in overpower. And it costs four, comes in for seven. It's a yellow card that blocks for three. So that's great value if you're attacking. But here's the thing. When you win a clash, revealing this, oh, gain a gold. So draw the card. Ah, oh, bro. Yeah. Like, explain. Is this is is this your closer? Is it what what is what is this card? I mean, most of the time, what you do with this card is if you have sometimes you have two gold, you will never need two gold to activate Victor. So you pop a gold and attack with this for ten. Yeah. If you have a seismic surge, you it's a single blue and attack for ten. I mean. It's a great way to end up games. And the, because it's yellow, a lot of times you pitch that card. So 
It then comes up on the second cycle where you will have already generated your gold and it's a great way to end the game by, you know, block for six, attack for 10, block for six, attack for 10. So it's a great way, you know, to actually wrap up the things. That's awesome. That's awesome. And if anyone doesn't know what overpower is, um, basically is that you can only block with one action card. So you can throw, you know, your as many defense actions as you like at this, but you can only block with one action card which is a uh, quite an awkward thing especially right near the end when you're throwing big attacks they are throwing the reactions at these other attacks and in, in the end you're saying you've run out of gas which is exactly the way how guardian likes to play and run is there you go you've run out and i've still got the golden sun, the golden sun. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it just fits into everything that you're, that you're saying that you know with big hits so Great card, great card. Um, that seems to be your big slammers. Yeah, so now we're on to pretty much the core of every Guardian. Here are all the blues. So if you've seen a Guardian deck tech before, this is of no surprise. They're, they're, a lot of their stuff, as you can see, costs quite a lot. So a lot of these cards, you've definitely seen them before if you've seen a Guardian deck tech before. So I can see, though, there are quite a few new heavy hitter blues, and I'm intrigued. First of all, are these heavy hitter blues just the new staples of Guardian in general, or is this kind of a, a Victor sort of thing? I think Punk specifically, the one that uh, when you win a class by revealing it, you create a mic token. Because it's a six power card, I think it's just going to be straight up a staple into every single Guardian deck. The yeah. fact that this card is a bit more expensive doesn't really matter because 99% of the time as a Guardian, you either pitch with that card or you block it. You never play that card. No. Yeah. So the fact that it's a six is pretty important. Yeah. The rest of them, though, Class of Might and Class of Vigor and Wallop are only seeing play because we are running Victor. We wouldn't right. want these cards into, into another Guardian that does not care about classing so much. Got you, got you. All right, well, let's, um, let's go through, since you've talked about Thunk, let's say Wallop, right? Thunk and Wallop, cool words. These, are, these feel like the Welcome to Wraith cards that we remember it actually feels like you're doing the move you know and this is a wallop so when you win a clash revealing this creative figure token okay so this is a flip off the top of the deck if this wins you the clash you also get a figure token so you're sort of getting double value crazy enough for this you know from whatever value you got from the clash and then you reveal this card and you just won the clash with this card i mean it just like you said with uh, Victor doing quite a lot of clashes, this just feels really strong. And, you know, Vigor is such an important token in Guardian because a lot of, you know, Bravo used to play Tunic simply because of sometimes he could generate that extra one resource to cheat on a card. So when you class and you win with Wallop and get that Vigor, that might open up a play, for instance, if you already had a Surge and you reveal this card of a class mm. suddenly you can play a spinal cross of a single blue mm. i mean and it opens up a lot of these types of play that's why that's the reason why people like guardian and that's where guardian signs with these cheating a card you know value and it's pretty important to have access to this deck i mean this card is so good that i've seen people play wallop and sometimes thank even in reds simply for the reason, you know, to pop off the top in order to win the class and generate the value. It's that good. Mm, okay. No, that... Yeah. So the other two that are, that are actually also initiating clashes a lot other than the Test of Strength and the Trounce is Clash of Might. So when this defends, clash with the attacking hero, the winner creates a Might token, bl blue block for three, basically, and the Clash of Vigor. Again, blue block for three when this clashes, if this if you win create a figure token very similar sort of uh things going on there so they're they're your clash cards effectively for blocking your blue block free clash cards they feel a lot more like 
so much more impactful than the usual way that you would see a Guardian Blue Bot 3 that actually just has something else with it. And that's not just for Victor, that's just Guardian in general, right? Yeah, I mean, having a, it's a blue card that blocks three, pitches for three, and sometimes can even generate more value while blocking, which is pretty great. I could see, though, in a meta game where you would be running Anothos a lot, that mm. maybe you would need to maybe cut these cards down. But if that's the case, probably you don't want to play Victor. I yeah. Mean, probably you want to play something, you know, Bravo or another Guardian. But if you you are the class deck you want to class as much as possible to get that extra value of you know showing cards at the top of the deck so yeah yeah they're pretty great i noticed that actually and i think that's a really cool design or development sort of um pathway that they didn't kind of just also replace this card with other cards because the reason you wouldn't want to run this in anathos is that anathos it cares how much the cost of the card that you've pitched so because this cost was two Anathos isn't going to activate and work. And I really like the fact that they just went, if we put a three on that, automatically it's just going to get thrown into every deck and it's, you know, cool. But we don't, you know, there's there, that'll be too much value. You know, there's just too much flexibility going on there. So I really like the fact that those two cards do cost two, um, just to make you really think about why do you want to put this in your deck other than... Yeah. Yeah. Again, that's the reason I said earlier that maybe Victor, you know, maybe in a year from now where Droma is no longer around, Victor will sign even more because he will not have to run all of these random three cost blue cards just in order to satisfy the Anathos. And he could run Tunic and then a lot more value oriented stuff, which I think is where Victor actually signs. Yeah. So hero. it's funny, isn't it, that you've like certain heroes are just primed in this amazing spot of what they should and want to be, but then other heroes will, like you said, just sort of crush this down a bit. But it's really cool to see that there's actually more to it, you know, that it, there's more to this pushing his mechanic even further after, you know, Dromai has moved on. Let's just go through some of the uh, classic blues that you can just sort of... They are blue block threes that have a high power damage, you know. Um, Thunderquake, pretty simple. Buckling Blow, four for six. It's six, so it blocks and pops dragons. Simple. Chokeslam, again, four for six. Pops dragons, pretty simple. Disable, five for seven. Has actually got a reasonable... Um, piece of text on it if you deal four more damage put the uh card on the bottom their arsenal to the bottom of the boat, their deck but you know it's, it's fine but again it's a blue block three pops dragons um uh, cranial crush i think cranial crush is actually a little light outlier here um with the with the, coming in for eight and an on hit effect that's actually generally quite annoying um but this is a staple guardian card that you will see because blue block three high power and it has a reasonable piece of text on it and i think macho grande is actually the really i think that's it's probably safe to say maybe your best attacking blue card for an end game yeah because it's got it's dominate <laughs> that's it <laughs> i mean you would run you would always run all of the eight and seven powered blue cards in Victor anyway. Yeah. I mean, you, you would cut uh, some other cards, you know, if you didn't want to run Anathos, but your eight, you know, your Disables and your Thunderquakes and Mucha Grandes, you would always run these cards in Victor. First of all, because they win classes. I mean, non, no other deck can beat an eight power card or a seven power card at the top of the deck if it's not a Guardian. They yeah. can never be. Or, the, or, or one lucky Rune Blade player flipping over a Ninth Blade or a Brute Reinar <laughs> flipping over a, <laughs> an, a, an Alpha Rampage. But, I mean, the odds are not in your favor whatsoever. So, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, that's... I think that's pretty fair, right? That's what all these cards... Are, that's what that, that they're designed to do. Close a game out, come in with pretty big hits and um, high power for clashes. Um, we've got two blues here that are, well, they're not, they're not 
they, they could they could scupper your clashes. They could <laughs> scupper the clashes. Let's start off with since we're talking about so many attacks, rouse the ancients. Yeah, I mean this card you see this quite a lot in Guardians all the time, right? It's your nice go wide turn as an additional cost to play it. You may reveal any number of attack action cards from your hand with 13 or more. If you basically reveal the cards and it totals to 13 or more damage, this attack gets plus seven and go again. I mean, this fits into everything you really want to do as it, as your aggressive turn because, I mean, you've got a lot of high attack uh, blues in there. So, but, this, but it goes against Clash sometimes. What's your thoughts on it? Well, there is a limit to how much, you know, consistent we can get and how much we need to start being, you know, having a bigger ceiling sometimes. Mm. And uh, Theora Sander and Rouse of the Ancients, mainly Rouse of the Ancients, is exactly that card where, you know, sometimes we get a four-card hand with only blues. So we need to be able to do something. Or we get a three-card hand and all we can do is swing with hammer and we need to arsenal a blue. Rouse of the Ancients is a great way, you know, to maybe later manage to do a play that you actually do use a blue to translate it into a relevant attack. And also there is the added benefit of Rouse of the Ancients is great when you run three pulverizers. Mm. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. so easy to, I mean, it's so easy to keep a three card hand, swing for seven with Rouse of the Ancients and just arsenal the pulverize. I mean you still swing with seven of your th two card hand and put it the card in arsenal which is you know yeah. in the mid-range value it's pretty great mm. so yeah no i mean that's it, revealing a um a pulverized around the ancients is just um just feels like a win <laughs> yeah and revealing pulverize is an upside because you saw the opponent you're like you know what's coming next you know what's coming if you don't attack me now <laughs> you know what i'm going to put in arsenal <laughs> yeah and then terra sunder another really awesome card that's came from the tales of aria set uh your next guarding attack gets plus one dominate and if this hits they discard two cards this has go again cost three blue block three ah uh, i can see I remember you watching you on this on stream and a lot of people are in an hour. And I mean, this card has got insane value to it, but at the same time, a lot of, you know, head scratching, chin rubbing moments of, do I want this card? But you've put it in. So why have you decided to put it in? I mean, this card plays so well in what we're looking to do. I mean, the only huge drawback, obviously, is that it's not an attack and then does not have a high power in order to help you win classes. But a lot of times, again, how the opponents might play out into Victor is that they are not afraid to give you a full turn without attacking because they know you do not have anything to do with your five-card hand. You do mm. not have anything, you know, strong to do. You might brick and just get four blues. Four blues with uh, Tier Asunder is still pretty threatening. Mm. I mean... It's still, it's the easiest way to extend your turn to play all of the cards in your hand with only blues and, you know, with a single red. Mm, and yeah. again, it's a great way to end games. I mean, putting Tira Sander in Arsenal, playing a blue Thunderquake, nine dominate if it hits discard your <sighs> discard two cards. I mean, it's make your own crippling crash. And one yeah. of the biggest reasons is that Tira Sander is super important in the Guardian Mirror. I right. mean, you cannot really run. It's a huge thing to have access to Tierra Sander in the Guardian Mirror because that's actually how you end games sometimes. Yeah, no, that's totally fair. Plus, uh, artwork is sick, man. How could you not run this? Look at this guy. He's tearing the world in half. So this is your main board deck. you got exactly 60 cards in here. And then we're going down to your um, very small, tight sideboard. Now, we'll go through the equipment. You've got an old rune boots. I mean, no rune boots is uh, your... Uh, please don't kill me, um, rune blades. But only AB1, right? I mean, what's... I mean... Wizards, bro. <laughs> I mean, that, that really depends on how the meta game will shape up. Yeah. If we start seeing more Arcano, it's really easy for this deck to just cut two cards and add two more Arcane Barrier. But... I think Kano will still be a rough matchup, even with AB3, because 
unlike with the Bravo, you do not have any heat effects. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was not afraid to just put a single AB because I don't think Victor would have a great matchup in Duquesne with AB3 either way. Sure. It's just, you're coming in with high damage, but then we're just doing a damage race between each other, aren't we? And one of them is doing it on... the at your weakest point and then you're and you're coming in for 10 they can choose how they want to do this and you can't necessarily choose how you're going to fight them when they're just blasting you with arcane they'll wait until you're at your weakest point so yeah, I... yeah they have all the time in the world to set up and whenever they they want they can make everything is perfect before they go off so yeah. i don't think ab3 would change much no that's fair enough and then you've uh put in the anathos you've explained quite a bit why and uh, it's for the dromai matchup is there any other reason why and the guardian the guardian and matchup. the guardian matchup okay and the guardian matchup yeah i mean it's uh it's pretty important to be able to swing with anathos whenever you have nothing in your turn mm. to just Lock six, swing for six. It's really important to have access to this play pattern, even if you are not going to use it every single turn. Got you it. need to have access to this play pattern as a guardian. Okay, yeah, pretty simple. Um, so you've got your all reds actually. It's pretty interesting. So uh, the the we'll do we we'll do the start with the combo right. You know, it's the command and conquer with, and I can see next to it pummel that that combo Ugh, everyone's favorite but you've got three copies of command and conquer in the sideboard what is that going into so pretty much whenever you know that you're playing versus a deck that's aggressive enough that you will never have time to set up your expensive attacks mm. you probably want to cut something for command and conquer either the pulverizes or you know the primed to fights or the thunderquakes i mean you if you versus a ninja, for instance, you will never have a five card hand in order no. to be able to play the pulverize. So you want this lower tempo. You can block with two cards, block with three cards, and then play a CNC of an arsenal. And even though it sounds weird why you would not want, for instance, primes to fight, having a might token with CNC is devastating sometimes. <laughs> That's I mean, true. Swinging Swinging with a CNC for seven is a huge difference compared to swinging with a CNC for six. Yeah, no, that's that makes total sense. Um, CNC for seven, it's just unfair. It's just not fair. Pummel, three copies of Pummel Red. When are they? Uh, is this uh, again a card that's slotting in with CNC? Pretty much, I think it's pretty easy to sideboard with this deck, actually, because whenever you're looking to go offensive, you just cut the block cards, you add Zealous Belting and Pamel and Anethos. And right. you're suddenly the most aggressive version of Victor you can possibly be. So that's mainly the reason why we want Pamel. It's a great way to extend your turn. It's a great card to set up and... Versus some decks that are not looking to attack you, like the Klovosen, like OG Dash, like Dromai, you need Pamel to be able to push enough damage to actually kill the opponent. Yeah, okay. And then you explained about Zealous Belting as well, that if you just need to just cut this big defense and go on the offense, a perfect card. I mean, the Zealous Belting in Rouse the Ancients just feels like Guardian Classics for being aggressive. And yeah, it just doesn't surprise me to see this. And your last is your three copies of Movable and Guardian, right? Or just some big hitter like Azalea even? Yeah, I mean, it's mainly for Guardian. And the reason we prefer Unmovable over Stone's response is the fact that Unmovable is a three cost and we don't want to include another non-three cost card in our deck because we have slightly more than the Bravo because we run some of the class cards. So we want unmovable, and it's great if you're going to have one defense reaction when the defense reactions are relevant, just play the biggest one. <laughs> we are the biggest deck after all. We want the <laughs> biggest defense reactions and the biggest attacks. Yeah. So just go with unmovable. No, that's awesome. And that is all the cards. I mean, it's a very, it, it's uh, just like um, the Kasai deck we did with J.K. Clements. It seems so consistent. It's just the the numbers, the the block value, everything just seems to just 
slot really well. There's no weird jank stuff. It's just raw value. That, that's pretty much the way you want to play Victor. I mean, and it's also a take on how the meta game might shape up because we right now we have no idea how the meta game will shape up. So that's why we want these blank, big numbers, big numbers cards. But if we know a bit more about there are some decks we want to target and stuff, I have you know it's pretty high in consideration to run. Choke Slam Reds mm -hmm. and Disable Reds mm. over Primed to Fight and Thunderquake. Got I mean, if, if you need that more disruptive element in your deck because you are playing versus decks that don't really care if you're just slamming them with big numbers. I mean, and that's the biggest part, the biggest strength of Garden in general, that whenever the metagame will actually shape out, we can trim out the weakest cards or the cards that do not fit in the current metagame to actually add, you know, the silver bullets that are useful into how the metagame looks like. Yes, and that's, um, that's just always Guardian's biggest strength, isn't it? It's the, uh, like you said, the adaptability of um, choosing the right uh, big slams at the right time. Um, and they've all got, there's so many options from different red attacks that have these really devastating crush on hit effects um, that just gives you that, you know, oh, this, you know, it's it, the flexibility of Guardian in general is just very good. And that's all the cards. Um, what your, I will end this on um, your, Vic, you know, Victor's highlights and uh, his struggles really. So we'll start with the struggles and we'll end with the high. So, when is Victor gonna be like, oh no, this isn't this isn't working out? I think by far your weakest matchup has to be Kayo for me. Yeah. Specifically Kayo. I mean, the reason is that most of the Kayo lists run 54, 51 at worst, cards that win classes. So cards that are six power or, or more. Yeah. And that's even better than you. And you are supposed to be the class deck. I mean, <laughs> Yeah. The numbers are even better than your deck. And in order to fight that, in order to include every single huge number you you can, you will destroy some of your other matchups. And I don't think it's worth the... I think it's just better, playing better to not play Victor if you are in a, you know, super Kajo meta game, for instance. Okay. I don't think it's that rough with Levia and Reiner. I think it's specifically Kajo because... Ka Reiner and Levia might run some non-attacks, their numbers are not so high, they do not have such a huge consistency of six power cards, they, they do not, for God's sake, they do not run 54 six power cards. No, no. <laughs> they, they do not run this many. So, and probably the second one is that in the Guardian Mirrors, yeah. Victor could be slightly in the back foot because your defensive cards with specifically this list, which is Trounce and Test of Strength, are not defense reactions. And that means you cannot really play the, you know, put the card in Arsenal and, you know, defend when it's needed. You cannot use a block from Arsenal. And that's sometimes a huge drawback mm. into, the, in, into the Guardian Mirrors. But again, I think it's, if Drumai were to instantly disappear and you would no longer need to run Anathos and you would you could forge another way to combat Guardians, I think we could have a totally different, you know, place feeling of Victor. Victor could actually be favored into these decks if he had the sideboard slots and the deck slots to deal with Guardian in general. Yeah, absolutely. There was one thing I actually forgot to mention, and people are going to be sitting there going, you didn't mention it, and it's actually one of these really cool cards. He's got the Miller's Grindstone. I mean, if this, this is the only offensive clash weapon that you've got. Um, if you win, destroy the top card of their deck, and if you lose, just put a minus one counter on it. I mean, is you've put this into the main board deck. I do apologize, we've skipped over this bit, yeah. but is this, again, part of that, thing about victor isn't it like you know the, the mentioning about ko is just like oh god this is this could be really bad but if this you know when does this card come into play like most of the time near the end or 
I mean, I mean, this card is amazing because it keeps a constant threat to the opponent. Not only you are fishing for a card that generates value when you reveal it off the top and win a class, not only it's doing that, but it also keeps that constant pressure of the opponent that, mate, if you don't kill me, you will run out of deck. There is no <laughs> yeah. way you can combat me at uh, fatigue. There is no way. Uh, there, there is no way you can, you know... My, even my hammer needs two cards for you to block or a defense reaction. And there is no way you can come. You need to kill me. If you don't kill me, you will run out of deck. Yeah. And it really, it's such an important piece of Miller's grindstone. But I don't, there, you could build the victor deck without caring about Miller's grindstone in order to have a better uh, fighting chance into Kayo. But that's his strength. I mean... Swinging, keeping a single card, and swinging with Miller's Grindstone, and revealing the Golden Sun, and suddenly drawing a card, and putting a card in Arsenal, and suddenly you're like, the opponent's like, mate, mate, chill, mate, <laughs> you dealt me four damage, you discarded one card from my deck, you drew a card, and you got the Golden, suddenly you got an Arsenal, mate, chill out. <laughs> uh, it's, I mean... Yeah, it's too good. It's too good to pass yeah. up. Absolutely. Well, I apologize for everyone. Um, so, as we're as you're saying some of the highest the hardest parts his great matchups what are the ones that you're like ah oh, yes here we go i mean the biggest reason i think to currently choose victor over any other guardian is how great his ninja matchup is oh right okay i mean almost you know Ninja's Phi specifically, for instance, has no card that can win a class against you. Almost no card that can win a class against you. Your lowest attack card is four, and their highest attack is maybe five. I mean, it's yeah. X3 in their deck. There is no way they can win a class against you. So the value you get from blocking with three cards and drawing a card off a gold because you will win the class and hitting them back is just way off the charts that they, they cannot really combat that. Specifically Phi, that, you know, is built in these engine, you know, the new era Phi's where they go Kodachi into Kodachi into play the value game. They have no chance. There is no way they can outvalue you in that type of Kodachi, Kodachi, Thread and the Mask game plan because you always have extra cards to block. You do not care about... Even Hammer is devastating. Even Hammer will rip their deck apart. Oh, that's, that's, so this is a, an aggressive ninja killer. That's really that's really cool to hear, actually, because um, I think there's been times where Guardians do have this bit of a struggle. Not so, you know, you can get... Definitely, it's not uh, a, a complete loss, but they, you know, having all these little tiny hits and then you're trying to do something big and Katsu can just flip out into this and it's just... Victor's just seems pretty straightforward. It's like, nah, clashes, mate. You ain't winning them. And I'm just going to get so much value from it. Well, dude, thank you so much. Any shout outs you want to do just to wrap this up? I mean, uh, if you guys want to check out with uh, the Fab uh, KS team, I would love to. We start doing more and more content regularly. So if you want, I would like to do a huge shout out to the rest of the team oh, from Fab yeah. KS. Yeah, so if anyone doesn't know, Fab Chaos is a Greek, uh, t a Greek team that plays a lot of flesh and blood. They have the world champion in their team. So, and we've got what, and we've got Yorgos is one of the, in my opinion, one of the best Guardian players in Europe, and also probably one of the best worldwide. You know, I'm, I'm I'm throwing this out there, right? This guy knows his stuff. This guy really does know his Guardian stuff. Even here, the Alex interview put rates them very high. So this team is a force to be working with. I'll put their uh, links down below. You can check out Yorgos' stream as well as the YouTube channel below. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, checking out this amazing video. Thank you, Yorgos, for giving us the high and mighty himself. Thank you for having me. No. See you later.